Welcome to a special edition of Dispatch Radio. This is the second in our four-part series recapping our live Rare Air Talks event at the Studio Boulder on May 17th, sponsored by the Colorado Outdoor Recreation Industry Office. In this episode, you will hear from Luis Benitez, director of that office. Backcountry Colorado, hiking, backpacking. I did a lot of marathons. I was convinced to do some ultras. Climbing, and I do filming and photography. I just like the ultras because I love the community. I just think that everybody is so nice, whether they're the first place finishers or, you know, us that kind of mosey along. All right, y'all. It's a name you know if you're familiar with the outdoor industry at all here in Colorado. It's a guy that is out there talking the talk, walking the walk, and doing it here at Rare Air Talks. Luis Benitez, welcome to the Rare Air Talk stage. Don't take, my- <laughs> Don't take my mouse away. This is mine. You know, I was actually literally going to start by talking about friends in the room. And, you know, I'm one of those rare individuals that moved to Colorado over 20 years ago and was lucky enough to grow up in this industry and this economy, bouncing all around the state. I, I see... <laughs> Sorry, Jerry, I got to point you out. All the way down to my wilderness first responder instructor is in the room tonight. So, you know, we we are a family in this industry and in this community. And I think we do focus on some of the things that we find to be the most important to us. You know, one of the things that I often focus on um, for our office and other states that are having this conversation is asking a pretty simple question. What are we responsible for in the middle of this ecosystem? What are the things that we need to feel an obligation to move forward as opposed to see as a burden. So we all know the history for the outdoor industry and the economy, predominantly white, predominantly a little bit of discretionary spending because you have to be able to get to do to some, some of these fun things and have the gear to do some of these fun things. And how do you influence a paradigm that's been around for almost 100 years, if not longer? What does that look like in the context of inclusion? And asking that question of what we're responsible for, I do want to bring too much gravity to our conversation tonight, but I do think it's important that moving forward, we all have this sense of responsibility and obligation, not just for the outdoor industry, but for our state here in Colorado. Let me explain why for a second. So you all know the conversation that went on with the outdoor retailer show in Utah, right? Everybody familiar with that one, the public lands dialogue? Well, the reality is Utah has just as robust of an outdoor industry as we do, focused on very, very similar things. And so it was less about Colorado good and Utah bad in this process. But the one thing that struck me that everyone I talked to from around the country and some other parts of the world were excited about being here for was the fact that we, as a state and as a community, were willing to have conversations that nobody else was. Exactly like what we're doing here tonight. You know, we did a, I call it the Thunderdome, the the Airstream trailer, because it gets really hot and awkward in there when we record. Um, I'm sweating right now because I eat two green chili tacos. Very, very hot. But a lot of the things that we talked about in there today with the guests that you'll hear from later on, choosing our pronouns, understanding how to ask regarding language, going beyond the normal modalities of diversity and inclusion. What does that mean? How do you tie that together to your everyday existence so it becomes so normalized that you don't even think twice? We want to continue to have that conversation here. We want to continue to champion that process that not only has brought us all together here, but I love your story. If you don't like the narrative, you have to change the narrator. And the good news about that is that we all have a place in that story. I think we've all in our own special way contributed to this journey. We've asked difficult questions. We've been in the middle of those challenging conversations. doesn't mean this is going to get easier, but what it does mean, and I'm standing up here with a call to action, is that as Coloradans having the largest gathering for our community and our economy here now three times a year, we have a responsibility to lead the way. And that leadership will only come with your voices, your support, your encouragement. So I want to share a funny story in closing because I think it's important. And I think you're going to probably hear this theme throughout the evening of all of our guests talking about that awkward, pivotal moment where you try to find your own way within your cultural and gender identity. And and oftentimes 
it gets weird. It gets challenging. And my journey, even as a heterosexual male, son of an Ecuadorian immigrant, was no different. My mom was from the Midwest. No one in St. Louis, Missouri could pronounce Luis. Hopefully nobody in here is from St. Louis, but sorry, buddy. No one, literally. I tried to explain it. I tried to spell it. It would drive my father crazy. He would shake his head and go, there's no E-W. There's no L-E-W-I-S. Who are your, who are your friends that don't know how to say this? So my name became Lou. I was Lou all through high school. And I accepted it because it was just too damn hard in the middle of America to rebel against figuring out how to help people understand how to spell my name. It's not like I was making up the spelling or had an umlaut over the U on purpose. That was my name, and that was my identity. When I moved to Colorado in 1992 to start working for the Colorado Outward Bound School, I sat down with Mark Udall, who had been at the time before he was our senator, was actually the executive director of Outward Bound. And he instantaneously said, Luis, great to meet you. I love climbing in Ecuador. Tell me a little bit about your history. Tell me a little bit about your passions that brought you to our school. And right then and there, I knew that Colorado had this amazing opportunity to create leadership around these things that are important to us. So I share that story with you. If anybody calls me Lou this evening, don't worry. That's okay. But the fact that this is not a new conversation. We've all had our own moments within this dialogue. And it's okay to bring those to the table tonight. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to try to find your space in the middle of this journey because that and only that will make this entire process better. So thank you for being here. Thank you for staying engaged. And are we going to intermission now? Is it that that quick? Great. Thanks, everybody. A quick note from our nonprofit partners for the evening, Big City Mountaineers. They have one slot remaining for their Summit for Someone trip to the Grand Teton in Jackson Hole, July 16th through 19th with Jackson Hole Mountain Guides. Help raise money for a great cause and have an experience of a lifetime. Contact Brian Martin at Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, at BigCityMountaineers.org. And lastly, if you are in the Colorado area and have an interest in the topic of runner's high or relevant experience, we would love to hear from you. Write to us at info at dispatchradio.com for a special offer to take part in a mini citizen science research project.